Okay, well, thanks very much. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an enormous uh, nickel and cobalt deposit in sulfides, class one nickel. Uh, I don't have time to get into the whole uh, discussion about electric vehicles and lithium ion batteries and so forth. Suffice it to say that the uh, metal, uh, the commodity that the producers of batteries are worried about and, and that the producers of electric vehicles are worried about is nickel. Uh, nickel is a huge part of the lithium ion battery. Uh, when you get to an 811 uh, uh, chemistry, um, such as the Tesla, uh, that's eight parts nickel uh, and one part cobalt. Um, in a 300 kilogram battery pack, uh, nickel would be about 54 kilograms of that. So a very significant part of the electric vehicle. Uh, we've got a very large deposit. I'll get into a whole, um, you know, into our recent uh, resource update. But uh, in the measured and indicated categories alone, uh, we've got 5.2 billion pounds of nickel and another 312 million pounds of cobalt. It's an enormous resource. We've got double that again if you add in the inferred. Um, one of the strengths of our deposit is that we're able to make a very nice high-grade concentrate out of it. Uh, we're, we're, we're making concentrates in our current metallurgical testing anywhere between 18% and 26% nickel uh, with a nickel to cobalt ratio of 18 to 1 in the concentrate. Uh, very low in deleterious elements. Uh, this is suitable, this is a beautiful um, uh, concentrate for a smelter. Um, but it's also amenable to uh, direct uh, pressure oxidation to sulfate form for batteries. So, Currently, if you want to make sulfates, uh, people are buying battery or, or people are buying briquettes and even metal from smelters, grinding it, hitting it with acid, and processing it backwards to sulfate. So uh, I think we're trying to develop a model where you simply take our product and process process it directly uh, into sulfates for batteries. It's a much more efficient route, and we believe we'd be paid more for that. Uh, this is just a little bit about, I'm, I'm going to bash through this fairly quickly because I've got 10 minutes. Uh, it's been an interesting drawdown, especially recently in uh, LME nickel stocks. Uh, LME nickel is all class one nickel. Uh, this is just simply showing that there's not enough projects in the pipeline to supply the class one market that is developing in electric vehicles. Uh, this is an interesting one. Um, Class one nickel is suitable for batteries, it's suitable for all sorts of different things. Uh, class two nickel, which is ferro-nickel and nickel pig iron, is nickel with iron units. It's suitable only for stainless steel. And uh, nickel pig iron is, is, is well supplied, but in the last 10 years, because nickel pig iron caused the nickel market to collapse, there's been very little investment in projects capable of producing class one nickel. If you want class one nickel, you've got a choice between a sulfide deposit, such as ours, or uh, a type of laterite deposit, um, uh, the limonite portion of the laterite, which is processed using high pressure, high temperature acid leach. And uh, we are competitive with the HPAL projects, like extremely competitive. Um, so for one thing, if you look at this at the bottom line, capital intensity, um, that's how much your capex is, your initial capex per, per, per ton of annual production. And so the HPL projects are extremely capital intensive. We can beat them on that. Uh, we need a lower incentive price than the HPL projects need. Um, but also, uh, if you look at the environmental considerations, some of the HPL projects do it right in terms of when they take their extremely acidic uh, effluent stream, um, before dumping it in the ocean, they will neutralize it. Those are the better ones. Uh, there are HPL projects out there that don't even neutralize it. They're just dumping <laughs> extremely acidic effluents directly into the ocean. Um, I believe that this is going to become more and more important as the electric vehicle uh, you know, revolution continues because EV buyers in North America and in Europe care about uh, you know, the environment and they want ethically sourced materials. 
So if you are getting your materials for your batteries from an HPAL project that's dumping acid into the ocean, you're not sourcing your materials ethically. So it's just another way that our project is competitive. Uh, Wood Mackenzie thinks that the HPAL projects need uh, $12 a pound nickel to uh, justify getting built. Um, and so they think that that's the incentive price that uh, the nickel has to move to. It's currently about seven and a half dollars a pound. Uh, we think we need nine or ten dollars a pound on the same definition. So we're competitive with the HPAL in terms of incentive price as well. Uh, this is interesting, uh, uh, but this is based on, on a PEA that is December of 2011. It is not current. Uh, it's valid, but uh, this is just simply to show you, um, you know, a rough idea of the scale of this deposit. If, if, if we go to $12, which, uh, which is what um, Wood McKenzie says is the incentive price, we get to an internal rate of return after tax of almost 30% and a PV8 of about $2.8 billion. And this brings up an interesting point. We're a tiny company with a market capitalization of $21 million Canadian. And we've got a project that is going to cost less than a billion dollars, but not much less to get built. And, you know, it's like a lot of small companies with, uh, you know, like, like copper companies with the big porphyry deposits, you know, where we've been beat up in the base metals market of the last, you know, eight years or so, is you've got a tiny, tiny market cap. How are you ever going to get a project that scale built? Um, it's just not credible. Um, well, the answer is it depends how badly people want class one nickel. Um, and at this point, uh, our strategy is that we're far more interested in uh, diluting the project than in diluting our equity. So we're out there looking for strategics to help us get this project to full feasibility, uh, and that's very much our strategy. We're going to do as little equity dilution as we can along the way, and the nickel market is starting to cooperate with us. Uh, but I think it's got a long ways to go. Uh, this is the mineral resource, and you can see uh, it's extremely large. Uh, strip ratio is pretty much zero in the early years. Um, it's low grade, but we get good recoveries for this type of deposit. And uh, another strength of the deposit is that it's an extremely simple uh, processing route. Crush it, grind it, float it. There's nothing complicated in there. There's no new tech in there. It's a very simple and reliable processing route. And it's, again, it's huge. I mean, uh, we could be producing 44,000 tons a year uh, of nickel in concentrate, and that is comparable to the huge HPL projects as well. Uh, in terms of concentrate quality, uh, out of the sulfide producers, uh, we're in the top tier. Um, uh, Boise's Bay, their high-grade concentrate, they can make 25%, but most of the concentrate they make is 20%. And, and uh, uh, our engineer was happy to put 18 to 22% as the band uh, for us, although we have seen as high as 26% in some of our test work. Uh, we're currently doing extensive metallurgical test work, variability testing and so forth. Um, and, and in fact, we've been through the variability testing, no surprises. Um, and we're getting into the optimization stage. Uh, we will produce a lot of concentrate with our metallurgical test work. Um, and this is a good thing to have on hand because we're having some interesting discussions with potential strategic partners and they want to get their hands on concentrate so they can test it for themselves. How much time do I have left? One minute, okay. Uh, this is where we are. We're up in a very mining rich uh, country. Um, this is the Golden Triangle, where Shaft Creek, Galore Creek, Esky Creek, and so forth. Uh, and they're in the Coast Range Mountains. But we are in rolling foothills terrain east of the Coast Range Mountains. We're also in the rain shadow of the Coast Range Mountains. So it's, it's, it's very straightforward, open pit type territory, building roads, all that infrastructure is uh, simple. Uh, this, is, this shows the ultramafic intrusive. Uh, those squares are one square kilometers. Um, and where we've 
drilled off, you know, more than a billion tons of measured plus indicated and more than a billion tons of inferred is a very small area uh, in the total uh, prospective nickel belt that we've got. So we've drilled off 20 or 25% of what's prospective here. And I think I'm done. Thank you very much. <laughs>